HiSec Buyback offers 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. Welcome to, welcome to Talking In Stations. I'm Rich Richmond, your host. Today is the 30th of September, at the end of the month. Tonight, we have the evens of the wormhole classes, uh, 246, uh, sadly no 8. From C2 Space, uh, arguably not wormholes at all, uh, Volk, from Odin's Call. I'll remember that one. <laughs> and from C4 Space, we have, uh, well, from wholesale operations, uh, Dakan, Ringo, and uh, Marcus Chen, or as he's currently named now, Smelly Boots. Hello. 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 And uh, my co-host uh, from C4 Wolf Riot, the scourge and scum of all wormholes, uh, Mark. Hello. And from uh, C6 Space and uh, Un 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 uh, Unchained Alliance, Sinalama. And I hope nobody's roached your sights. Yeah, you and me both, right? <laughs> well, let's begin with the uh, meat and potatoes of the guests. Uh, wholesale, tell me, tell me about yourselves. Well, uh, so I joined Wholesale about five months ago. Um, I started playing a long, long time ago when the war between Goons and Bob was a thing. Uh, and I left um, the game and was gone for about eight years, rejoined um, and about six months ago. And then I've been a part of Wholesale for about five months now. So I'm glad to be back in normal space. It's pretty much the only place to be. It's the best. Uh, I'm Dakon. I have I'm a recent member of uh, Wholesale as well. I'm an old faction warfare player. I've been playing Eve for about better part of ten years, and um, joining Wormholes was one of the coolest things I've ever done. So I'm Ringo. I'm part of the leadership at Wholesale, and Wormholes have been just about everything I've ever known. Spent some time with the Wormhole campus with Eve University. Bounced around a couple of. Uh, PvP wormhole corporations and uh, yeah, felt good here at wholesale and that's where I've been ever since. Uh, looking at the Z kill page and I can't tell what wormhole you currently live in because you've been in, active in so many wormholes. That's uh, me. Well, no, no, uh, uh, wholesale operations in general. in general. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we we get around. So one of the main reasons when I was looking for a corp to join after I, you know, so I came back to the game six months ago and I've been with Wholesale for about five months, looking at the, um, you know, we saw the recruitment post, a friend and I that had rejoined, and we ultimately ended up looking on the kill boards just to see who was active. And that's definitely one of the reasons why, um, why I decided to join them, at least in my case. Do any of you know the history of uh, Wholesale from begin uh, beginning to end? So... I wasn't personally there for the, the, the foundation of Wholesale. It was about five years ago. Um, but I've done my research. And it uh, started, like I said, five years ago when um, three other wormhole corporations at the time decided to come together. It was uh, Enclave Frontiers, Mass Industries, and another group called Fallen Sentinels. They uh, came together under a player some of you might have heard from or heard of, a guy called... Uh, 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 Nick Nika, I believe was his name, he was the CEO at the time. And uh, yeah, those those three corporations formed what is essentially wholesale today. Moved through various wormholes during during those five years. Um, I'm not going to list them all, uh, but there was a there was a C5 C5 in there where we actually had a keep star for a while. <laughs> there was <laughs> thought that might get a laugh. <laughs> There was a uh, we we also tried our hand at C two space for a while with a null six static and a C five static. Um, I guess we'll talk a little bit later about the the different kinds of content that you can get from your statics, and uh, yeah, we're finding ourselves um, feeling very comfortable in our current home, a C four with a C three C five static. 
So that's all the uh, wormhole classes you've been in. What kinds of wormhole uh, content do you currently get living in a class 4 wormhole? And, well, what uh, before we go on to the class 4 wormhole, that you have two exits. Uh, what are your statics for your class 4 wormhole? So we got a 5 and a 3. 5 and a... That's, a, that's really <laughs> optimal for... Um, Getting into yeah. high sec and also getting into C f uh, five wormholes for various reasons. That's a crabbing static setup. <laughs> yeah, a lot of um, a lot of groups who who live in C fours uh, tend toward gravitate towards the the, the C three C five um, for a, a lot of different reasons. Um, the C five static is is pretty obvious. Um, it's the easiest way to make money uh, in wormholes, maybe in the game. Um, it is, uh, you know, in, in being able to roach out of your, uh, your or crab out of your C5 static is a thing that a lot of groups do to make money. Um, and the C3 static is good for a lot of different things. I mean, you can, um, you know, uh, newer players who don't have quite the same uh, assets uh, that they can devote or, yeah, devote into crabbing uh, can, you know, rat in there in, you know, rattlesnakes or gilas, or they can do it in praxis. Uh, I know a lot of people rat in praxis uh, for really, really budget crabbing, and the return on their investment's pretty high. Um, and it's a, uh, it's, it's good to connect to other things. I mean, it's, um, you know, you get a lot of connections to content, uh, smaller scale content through the C3 for you know either groups that live in C3s or other groups that are passing through C3s. Um, and the C5 is the same way, where you get uh, mm -hmm. access to the C5 highway, uh, because C5s are more likely to connect to other C5s, um, and a lot of C5s are C5 statics. Uh, so you can, you know, you end up with these big long chains of C5s. You can run into all kinds of different people down that way. Um, but there, are, I mean, there are other setups people use. I know some people do, um, you know, C4s with C2, C5 statics for really easy access to case space, uh, and some that go hog wild. And have C4 uh, with C5 and C6 statics. Um, if you really want to get weird, um, there are a lot of different combinations. But I think in general, in general, a lot of groups who live in C4s will will, will gravitate towards those. It just is. It is the it is the meta. Wow, what kind of uh, content does wholesale go for living in that kind of C4 setup? Well, Mark's bang on the money when he talks about the, the, the variety that's available. So if you've got the more skilled, more experienced characters who've got the perhaps multi-boxes or so, they've got the possibility to make ISK in the C5. If you've got newer players, and we do we do um, bring newer players, less experienced wormhole players in, then they've got a potentially quite lucrative source of uh, ISK making uh, with a lower skill point threshold in the C3. But... We've got guys that like to go and uh, roam around in Null. And you can mm -hmm. generally do that if you scan down far enough down the C3 chain. We've got guys that like to take their T3s out and see if they can bag themselves a Praxis or a Rattle C3 ratting. So the C3 chain's there for that. Um, we are rage rolling several times a week in the C5, looking to catch some bigger fish in there as well. Case spaces aren't too difficult to come by. Low secs aren't too difficult to come by. Um, the big thing for us is there's lots of ways for us to engage with Eve through the aesthetics that we have. Like we're in the middle of like all the uh, different types of class wormholes, right? It feels like. So we always have an option of what to do. Yeah, and I, I love that. I, I think the other thing too is that the, the C4 by itself doesn't offer a whole lot um, in terms of, of content generation because the C4 uh, from a ratting perspective is bad. It's very, very bad. CCB never fixed, um, or maybe this was intentional and they just like uh, mm. uh, it to be bad. Um, that's not unexpected. Um, you know, C4 sites are not well set up. They don't give you a lot of money uh, and they are difficult to run and they're not ISK efficient. Uh, so a lot of people <sighs> will refuse to do those. But, um, you know, one of the perks of living in a C4 uh, is that you also can't fit capitals into a C4. So if you don't if you don't want to do that, and if you want to kind of avoid that kind of gameplay, you can do that by living in a C4. Um, you know, some groups prefer that. Some groups prefer to be able to uh, avoid those kind of escalations on the top end. Um, you know, so it, 
the other, I mean, the big, I think the biggest thing for a lot of people is that, um, you know, having the dual statics offers a lot of content to uh, a lot of different people, depending on what size your group is. Um, you know, and that, that is the highest you can get uh, in wormhole space while still having two statics. Uh, the C6 wormhole does not currently have, there are no C6 wormholes with dual statics. Uh, although that is a pipe dream of some recently failed CSM candidates, uh, it is um, not. It is not in reality uh, currently. But so, if you want to have a dual static wormhole, you have to live in a C4 or a C2, which is a whole very different, very different. One can dream, Mark. One can dream. <laughs> so One you can live, dream. You live in a C6. Uh, you live in a six uh, C6 with a five static. What's what's life in the C6 like? Look, um, there's not too many C6s, um, but there's certainly not a lot of groups that uh, live in a C6, C6 as a PvP group. In fact, there are none. Um, so we, we have the C5 static to try and engage in that, that PvP content. I guess we have the benefit that we can run home sites, unlike what Mark's talking about, um, as a group or individually. And the ISK is, is pretty good, although it can be a bit claustrophobic having a group living in the hole. It's, it's mm -hmm. one of the, the disadvantages of wormhole space. Once you consume a site, it doesn't auto-regen particularly quick. So the ISK is good, uh, although it is sporadic, but yeah, I guess it's the same as the other gentlemen when they're talking about hunting and then connecting with other groups through the C5 static, and that's why we've, we've focused on that. Yeah, it was a huge culture shock for me. Um, coming from Faction Warfare, you know, our fleets would be, you know, 100 million ISK, right? You know, we would get some <laughs> Thoraxes, buffer fit them, and then we'd be ready to go. But now it's, it's completely different. Um, yeah. You know, one ship is... One ship is that is an, as much as a whole fleet and on top of that um you know i had been killing um frigates t1 frigates cruisers things like that for a very long time in my career in eve but once i've joined once i joined wholesale within two days uh i quadrupled my all-time is kills yeah so it, like just two days two dreadnoughts were just sitting there doing their thing and uh i didn't even know what to say you know i had never even seen a dreadnought that um that wasn't an ally so it was it was a pretty big change for me Do you, in your C4, do you have any weather effects? We do, yeah. We're a pulse tie. That is... Well, how Shield. does that affect you? Shield. Shield yep. buff, armor nerf. A little bit of a funny things with a capacitor as well. Yeah. And on the yeah, other your, side... Your, your capacitor other... region is not as high. Uh, so, so newts are strong in a, in a pulsar as well. Uh, and also, there's a signature buff. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, as opposed to it's in, again in a lot of ways the opposite of the wolf riot. Uh, in in some ways, other in some dumb ways, not uh, where the wolf riot gets the the signature nerf, um, and so ships are generally smaller uh, in in practical terms. Whereas in a pulsar, they are you know big girthy things, um, and so a lot of times, you know, especially with um, uh, home defense doctrines and pulsars. You see a lot of, uh, you know, sh missile ships, um, you know, that can take advantage of the, the increased SIG. Um, you know, phoenixes are great in a pulsar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, I've lived in a sea. One thing we, we talk about quite a lot in more space is the concept of the heavy armor brawl being the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. But the pulsar and the fact that that's a shield doctrine fight makes for a very interesting twist on that kind of uh, brawl fight, that kind of that very cathartic engagement, you know? Um, that pulsar engagement can be very different in those kind of nuanced ways, particularly around capacitor warfare and um, the types of ships that you'll encounter, and that makes for a nice twist on it. Well, I've, I've experienced life on the, well, on the red planet, under the red sun, <clears> and <throat> in a C2 with a, a wolf riot, it certainly changes the doctrines up completely. Everybody's using rapid lights, and I I don't like it. There's something there's something really disgusting about wolf rays. I'm it's sure it's not. It is not an uncommon uh, perception. I think a lot of people find wolf rays to be kind of abhorrent. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you have to pick your own flavor of degeneracy. Uh, I think everybody lives with a little sin in their life some people um you know jaywalk some people huff glue and wolf riot uh users fit rapid light missile launchers to their armor bargasts 
that's just the way we that's the life we live um there's no uh they're just jealous know. if anyone talks bad about it they're just jealous don't worry about it look the way i see it it's you know it's the 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 game developers have have given us a, a gift it's this miserable hole that nobody wants to live in um except only the most depraved people in the game uh and all you have to do to win fights is uh, build as much armor EHP as you can, and then put a rapid heavy missile launcher on top of it, and call it good. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's fun. <laughs> how how do the uh, how does how do people live under the blue uh, the blue moon? They fit like their bargains with maximum shield tank and chuck okay. in a bunch of torpedoes, the biggest uh, guns possible because of the sig radius. I mean, armor doctrine was still ruling a lot of stuff. I'd say, despite even living in a pulsar, but. Um, shield tank, shield brawl. I, I mean, you definitely see more of that, right? Like uh, Drake navies, that type of a thing, uh, are really big. I mean, Ringo, I think that's been pretty much the big thing is like shield tank first. You know, like that's our our kind of go to. I think even living in a for pulsar, it doesn't. I don't know if it's because we're in a pulsar that that's why we do things like that, but I think it's it's kind of influenced it for sure, like doctrines and stuff. What? I mean, like as someone who enjoys going out and and scouting and finding and finding content, mm -hmm. it's it's nice to have kind of a decision to make when you when you when you're going into these places based on yeah based on the weather. You know that's that's yeah. going to affect nine times out of ten what doctrine you're going to bring to that fight. And it's nice to have that factor in there. It's nice to mm -hmm. have that variety kind of forced on you. Um, but yeah, to answer the question. It, I mean, it's a Caldari pilot's wet dream, right? You, yeah. you want you want a bunch of shields, and you want some you want some 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 hams. Um, obviously, mass is a factor. So, as cool as torpedoes are, um, you're not going to get too many of them through and back and down the various chains that might have a reduced mass already, as far as you know. So, the the go to ship tends to be battle cruisers, DNIs, mm -hmm. or, uh, or or command ships like Nighthawks. I've... Yeah, the night the 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 general buff to um, short range weapon damage did mm -hmm. a load of wonders for the Nighthawk, and I think it's probably fair to say that outside of the um, you know the more armor based heavy or ham doctrines like the the Legion or the Damnation or um, you know the the sacrilege, sacrilege. I guess. Um, mm -hmm you the the other big meta thing in wormholes right now are drake navies and nighthawks uh, my nighthawks. god did you see the i mean like look at the lions tournament right my god look how much those are cropping up yeah nighthawks nighthawks are just really good i mean they you know they have benefited the same way that all the other ham doctrines did um mm -hmm. they they are almost <laughs> ludicrously overpowered uh not i shouldn't say uh, i shouldn't say overpowered i know a lot of people who get really mad if i say that um they you know they're extremely thick uh they they have a huge uh shield hp uh and they do almost 1100 dps cold which is yep. for battle cruiser well they don't DPS. have plates no plates I've, so they're not they, slow they don't right? have plates uh, i've always uh, wanted to could... live under a pulsar but i think there's only one c2 wormhole with a pulsar that has a null sex static <laughs> and i think hard knocks owns it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it's um you know, pulsars are great. They're you know very defensible. Um, you know, you can fly a lot of cool things. I mean, you can't you can't put a phoenix in a wolf ray at. I mean, that's just the long and short of it. Uh, it that would be a dumb thing to do. Um, same goes with a lot of other dreads. I mean, it's hard to fit dreads in certain uh, some dreads in certain statics or in certain uh, wormhole effects, uh, just because of how the effect affects the the dreads. And if you're a capital pilot, that's something to be thinking about. Um, but a lot of those, uh, you know, especially on um, uh, on the capital end of of the you know of the meta, um, really the pulsar really favors those a lot right now. Mm. But uh, you know I'm the uh, I I'm living the C two. The effects are weak. Let's go up to the big boys. Sin, <laughs> does your wormhole have an effect? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I share Mark's pain. Uh, we also are in a wolf riot, which oh, is no. <laughs> disgusting in a C six <laughs> because a Cerberus, which unfortunately is almost the only way when uh, you're talking. You know that that balls to the wall is like seventeen hundred DPS or something at like it's some ridiculous. ridiculous range. It's stupid. Yep, it is comical. Uh, to, to put it in terms of, I think some people will understand. Uh, when we first moved into our Wolf Riot, which again it's just a C four, um, it doesn't have the same. I think it's like a two hundred percent bonus in the C six. Um, 
when we first moved into our hole, there was a group who uh, came in shortly thereafter. We were a young group at the time, uh, a group that came in shortly thereafter, uh, who, you know, all this bluster and all this, bah, 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 we're going to come, you know, and the, the intention was, uh, I think from their point of view, that they wanted to move up to high class at some point. Um, and they said that in order to do that, they wanted to use our home system as a, as a stepping stone and wanted to kick, you know, knock us out. And in fact, I think they actually offered to trade holes uh, with us as long as we um, uh, didn't get any money and we left them all of our stuff. So, you know, great deal. Uh, they showed up finally to evict us. I think they had like 15 confessors the day that they showed up. Uh, we undocked three Serbs and ran them off. Uh, and that was the end of uh, that. Because Serbs are extremely scary in a Wolf Riot. Uh, it doesn't really matter what, what uh, class you, in, you are in. They shoot out to about 150 kilometers and they do 1,200 DPS. So, yeah, but the shields are reduced, right? So you'll, you'll be fine, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, yeah. What about, uh, the, yeah. What about the other level right? effects? Oh, God. What about yeah, the other level effects? To... Oh, red giants are cool. Oh, yeah. red. Oh, God, the red giants, the overheating effect. You... Overheating is very bombs? cool. Smart bombs is very, are very cool. Uh, Wolf or red giants are very popular for ratters, too, for that reason. Oh, yeah. um, especially dread ratters, because you, a lot of the time lost in um, C5 and C6 sites is from waiting uh, on your smart bombs to kill frigates uh, in, or like frigate rats. Um, because you can't kill them with dread guns and they're very hard to track. Uh, so you kill them with smart bombs and the smart bombs do a lot more damage in a red giant. So they're very, very cool. It's my favorite wormhole effect. You one, my, there. one of my friends who has a uh, keep star in a C2 wormhole, don't even try to evict it, by the way, lives in a red giant and nobody, effect, <laughs> nobody expects just how much well, point range or web range you can get mm. under a, a red giant because you have the bonus <laughs> to the overheating bonus. Was that, uh, was that, Sin, was that Yodic video? Was that in a, uh, um, yeah. was he in a red giant? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, I think there's a few around, but the one I've seen, 100%. Is it was the a giant, like, hilarious. with the door call and everyone gets, like, smart bombs yeah. into yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's nightmares. A, I think it's a horde fleet. Um, yes. <laughs> had yeah, come in with Elvis a bunch said. of, uh, Slepnirs and, and Hurricanes, uh, and they were shooting at his, uh, his Rorqual. And uh, after shooting at it for a while, uh, oh, they're getting it so close! Like you believe yeah. they might get it. Oh, they're so close! I think I think he may have been bait tanking a little bit, but either Obviously. way, <laughs> very close. Uh, and then at one point, he warps over eight smart bombing nesters and lands on top of the fleet uh, and wipes the fleet. In a matter you just of hear that magical sound, <laughs> yeah, yeah. fifteen seconds or so. Red yeah. Giant is awesome. Uh, if I if there was if we got kicked out of our hole tomorrow, we would move to a Red Giant in a heartbeat. I won't hear otherwise. <laughs> the other ones, cool. the other ones off the top of my head are the cataclysmic, which is yeah. really weird. <sighs> a logi pilot's wet dream. Um, mm -hmm. I have had mm. some amazing fights. In fact, I think I had a fight against you, Mark, uh, quite you some did. time ago in one of them. Yes, we uh, some time ago we found a um, a low power Fortizar owned by some group. I, I can't remember who it was um, in a C six uh, cataclysmic. Uh, and cataclysmics, of course, they um, you you get increased uh, massively increased um, bonuses to uh, remote reps, and then massively decreased uh, uh, I guess nerfs to um, self reps. So having a logi on grid, huge benefit in a, in a C six uh, or any kind of uh, cataclysmic, but especially those. And yeah, we were we were in the middle of that fight. We it was us. Um, that fight lasted for almost four hours. I think it was, it, we, it were four or five different fights, uh, spread out <laughs> over three or four wormholes and culminated in a, um, a big fight where, uh, it was us on grid or well, what remained of our fleet. Uh, it was, you know, our group, Singularity Syndicate, um, Prismatic Legion, um, Wolves Among Strangers, maybe a handful of other smaller groups were there too, uh, versus the, the, the defenders, uh, and Hard Knox was there as well. Um, and then at the very end, uh, as we were finished or trying to finish off the Fortisar, um, a, a combined uh, wholesale uh, exit strategy and uh, quantum inquisition fleet rolled into yep. us after having rage rolled for, uh, my, to my understanding, many hours to get into Yeah, that many hours. I was like, we're like burning a path as we went because like we were finding dreads redding and other things. So it was just, oh man, it was a wild night. <laughs> The uh, the CEO of Bear that care or the CEO of Bear that cares the CEO of Cryptid Gaming uh, former CEO of Cryptid Gaming 
uh, Bear That Cares, uh, had an astute observation that night, um, which was that anybody who was trying to rat um, <laughs> in the four hours that that fight was taking place was either, uh, um, you know, turned into hot carbon uh, by the the rolling wholesale and exit strategy fleet or um, uh, piss terrified. So it was a good night. Uh, that's It was a really, really good fight. So one thing that I just want to bring in and when we're talking about these different system effects, so perhaps people who are not familiar with wormholes, what they won't understand is, you know, the fight might happen in one wormhole with one effect. Mm. But mm -hmm. if you're fighting along a chain, there can be a set of wormholes along that of that chain with all kinds of different effects, some vanilla, you know, some violently op uh, uh, opposed to each other. That can create for very, very interesting shifting battlefields when you're, you know, either heading to a fight, returning, mm -hmm. um, perhaps the fight takes place between a number of different systems. Um, it creates a, a, a massive amount of variety in terms of how you can engage and where you would choose to engage. And uh, I, I, I really think it's a, it, it's a fantastic mechanic for uh, keeping the game vibrant. Yeah, and, and that's why... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. You're, you're... Well, I was just going to say, uh, to add on it, I like how... Uh like the unique another unique part of wormholes um you know if you're fighting on that wormhole itself right unlike a gate if you're aggressed you can still jump through i mean you, you have polarization you have to worry about but you could easily fight in two different systems very quickly <laughs> like the, there I is like one more wormhole weather effect i think we haven't covered and that is magnetar magnetar magnetar, magnetar. magnetar. Ah, the magnetar uh, I don't know how I feel about the Magnetar. Ah, we don't talk about the Magnetar. Yeah, if you go, paradise. If you go to fight Alpha, <laughs> you're crippled by the fact that it reduces your lock range. But if you go short range weapons, then you don't get to take full advantage of the immediate bonus damage that you can get with a high Alpha Doctrine. It's mm. yeah, it's just the, a huge uh, DPS on PIFA. It's huge. The uh, the the Magnetar is is sort of like if somebody. Um, took surgical strike right that most beloved update from from for all wormholers they took surgical strike and they kind of chopped it up real small into kind of a powder okay and then they cut little lines of it and then <sighs> that's sort of what the magnetar is uh it's it's you're gonna do a lot the fights are gonna be quick the fights gonna be real quick uh, you're gonna do a lot of damage uh you have to be very careful um and you love finding uh dreads in a magnetar because oh. you can bring a lot of different uh you can bring a lot of different uh, uh doctrines to shoot a dread in a magnetar. hard to mess that one up in it yeah yep you can it is hard to find things that will not kill a dread quickly in a magnetar because anything can kill anything quickly in a magnetar uh, well, with all the dread ratting and well, all the ratting that goes on in wormhole space, we've earned ourselves quite a pretty penny. And now the the Nolv sec players are upset. They're getting uppity. They're not happy oh. with all the changes that have yeah. affected their income. We weep now, for them, yeah, I know it's understood, yeah. And now we have something that the C2 residents really love, and that is the fact that they can access K-Space and the crab. What the hell is a crab? Because I've been out of this for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh man what is a crab really a crab is a lifestyle uh in a lot of ways crabs are crabs are sort of a a, a, a spiritual choice you make for yourself um yeah yeah that's what a crab but, is but i think i think we're talking about this new concord gosh what's the acronym oh, um, yeah the crab yeah, yeah. yeah concord okay. rogue analysis beacon that's the one like yeah. this new thing that's just been announced, right? Finally, Look, we can use our super capitals, right? There was a comment made, and I, I do want to address this because uh, I was involved in this conversation on the Eve subreddit, which mm, is a joy. Uh, there was a con there was a a comment made by a, a sitting CSM um, that effectively said that because wormholers are are able to make so much money. Um, they don't need to be included in other areas of content uh, because they already have a lot of content wow. and, they and they should be happy with the content that they have. Um, that is an interesting take by a representative of the community, I will admit. Um, 
and a little frustrating. Uh, I think people often conflate um, or incorrectly conflate uh, income with uh, with content. I, I mm. anybody who tells you that wormholers are not making a lot of money um, is lying to you because there is a lot of money to be made in wormholes. Yeah. Um, even even low end, uh, you know, new new players, um, you know, who who are flying with, um, you know, groups of even medium, you know, moderate size can make a lot of money in wormholes. Um, and so that's why you see, you know, doctrines and wormholes tend to be so much more expensive because you have to, you have to be able to keep up with, you know, the meta. If somebody's going to drop a bill and a half legion on you or drop 15 bill and a half legions on you, you have to find ways to compensate, right? And some people do that by, um, you know, changing how they, how they play the game and changing how they engage in those fights. Uh, and some people just try and match it with money. And since there's so much money in wormholes, you can do that. Um, but I feel like the mistake that people make is by thinking that because the money is there, that means that we, there's, you know, nobody out here is hurting for content. Um, mm. And as we described in, or discussed rather, uh, at length uh, during the CSM campaign this last year, um, wormholes are kind of starving for things to do right now. Um, you know, scarcity hurt us too. Um, you know, the fact that we don't have decent moons for people who want to come out here and do industrial stuff. Um, hurts wormholers a lot. Uh, there aren't wormholes in wormhole space anymore. Haven't been for a long time. Mm. Um, and outside of like hunting ratters or evictions or, you know, running off K spacers, you know, there's just, there's the, the abundance is not there uh, and it's not as readily available. Uh, there's a lot, there's always setup to do for anything you want to do in wormholes. Um, so the content is, is lower um, there's a better chance that, you know, if you move into a spot and set up, you could easily be wildly outnumbered or, you know, whoever is you're, you're fighting against eats themselves out. And that's, these are frustrating things, right? Um, and so I would say, Mark, also that it's, um, it's quite exhausting for those content creators, like, like any group in the game, regardless of where they're from, they're usually uh, built around a, a, a small number of niche content creators, right? And mm -hmm. if those people become exhausted trying to set up content or they can't reliably say hey guys on friday night we're gonna go and do a shooty thing you know everyone shows up and they get exhausted and, and that's that's no different to anywhere but um you know no one wants to form up for their big nullsec blocks and then get told to stand down right like you want to go and blow your stuff up um yeah, and that's it right like and you don't want those guys leaving i agree um yeah i mean in general i think i agree the um you know i think we've seen uh, over the last couple of months to the last year and a half or so, um, a pretty significant brain drain of content creators in wormhole space. Um, and so when CCP then does go ahead and introduce uh, a new way to generate content in wormholes um, or it generate content in the game um, and then restricts it uh, away from a certain region of space and makes it more or less unavailable um, unless you live in a, you know, a wormhole that has an easily accessible case space uh, static. Um, that is, I think, understandably frustrating. Um, or at least it's, even if it's, you know, do I think that this, these new crab modules or these new crab um, deployables are the answer to, um, you know, all the, the things that, that, that J spacers, uh, you know, carry on about? No, probably not. Um, I think our issues are a little bit bigger and have more to do with uh, the the issues with the meta uh, and the issues with um, you know some of the the things that are that are harder to do now in wormholes. But um, the position that you should take in that case is uh, while it's great that we're getting this great new content for case spacers and for you know null seckers and and whoever else wants to, to participate in these things, um, it is unfortunate that uh, that wormholers don't have access to something you know similar or something comparable um i don't feel like it is prudent or appropriate um for a um you know an acting representative of the community to sit down and say tough shit deal with it mm -hmm. you have a ton of money so what's what's interesting mark is last year um 
prior to the election, I think it was. There was a lot of chat in a in a group that uh, I think it was Laura Laura yeah. ran from from Hard Knocks, where he was uh, I think in, in Captator were the two main um, leads for this. But they, they I think they called it the Thumper. They did call it the Thumper. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, and if you remember, that was it, like mechanically it was slightly different, right? Like you put a thing down, and then however many days later it uh, it activates, and if no one uh, does anything about it, then then you know you you reap a reward, and alternatively, it's very obvious you're about to do it, like I guess a moon uh, pull that we see from Athenors. It sounds to be very similar, so I wonder if some of that styled this concept. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's it's effectively the ESS, right? Where over you know, and and I've talked about this before too uh, at length um, because I, I I saw the same document that I think you saw uh, back then. Of course, I I came in much later after that group was no longer really active. Um, and so just sort of, you know, it was like reading hieroglyphs on the walls, like to try to <laughs> decipher, trying to decipher what people were, were trying to say. Um, but in, in general, um, you know, the, the idea was that you have a, an asset that you can drop in space that, that generates value in itself over time. Uh, and whoever's dropping it obviously has reason to want to defend it. Uh, and people who are passing by or, or who roll into a hole um, would have reason to want to go hit it. Um, that creates content. Uh, in a way that, um, you know, you have a thing that, that generates its own value. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to rely on, because, you know, for better or worse, the most consistent way to get content in wormholes right now, um, outside of like arranging fights, is evictions. I mean, that's just, the, that's the easy way to say it. Uh, if you have two groups and they, you know, live in different time zones or, you know, play the game a different way um, a lot of time or, or, you know, don't have statics that run into each other very often. Uh, a lot of times you run into the issue where they just won't see each other. There's no reason for those groups to ever interact. But something that they can have in common is a timer, right? You hit a Fortizar, it generates a timer. Now, suddenly they both have something that they need to focus on. Um, and so that is great. I don't have any, I, I don't have as many issues with the eviction meta as a whole. I just wish there were alternatives to it. Because evictions suck, they take a long time to do, um, and it's it is very easy for uh, the defenders to you know just kind of pack up all their stuff and say, you know, but we'll find we'll, we'll take the Fortizar hit um, and whatever AFK stuff drops out of here, and you know you can figure out your shit later. Yeah, exactly. And, and a player might not come back, right? Like particularly if a guy's on his way out or he's focused on another game, and all of his stuff gets taken from him, he's just like, oh yeah. well, fuck this shit, I'm out. Pardon me. Yeah, it See is. You later, it I'm is. gone. It is it is frustrating, and so then being able to have um, you know yeah. alternatives to that, I think are a great idea. And they, they, I think that is something that a lot of people would uh, argue is a greater good for wormholes as a whole. Uh, and and sorry, go ahead. I'm I'm displeased by the fact that a CSM members you know spoke of a certain content and just felt that an entire area of the game should be just disregarded and expelled from it. That's <laughs> makes you worried when you see how stuff happens with like just coming back to the game and seeing what happened with Pakovin, for example. And then, you know, well, that's it's, kind of yeah, scary. It's no secret that uh, CCP is really good about introducing content and then promptly ignoring it or promptly forgetting that it exists, right? Um, you know, the same thing could be said about faction warfare. The same thing is absolutely yeah. being said right now about um, uh, about uh, Pochvin, right? Because Pochvin is kind of a mess and has been for a while. Um and not to say that wormholes are in a, a uh, as bad a state as those two places, because uh, I don't believe that they are. Um, but I also believe that the reason that they're not in such a bad state as Pochvin, uh, or as or as bad as uh, you know faction warfare, uh, yeah. is because uh, the the groups who live in wormholes I feel like are are better. Right? Uh, they're more cohesive groups. They have you know strong identities. Um, you know, strong collective culture. Um, and despite the fact that wormholes, wormholes as a whole are full of groups who despise each other for different reasons, um, there is a, a sort of shared consensus about, um, you know, the fact that we, we live out here because we want to generate content um, either for ourselves or for each other. Um, and that is, that is something that, you know, for better or worse, has kept wormholes on life support for a long time. Um, but by the same token, there are always new opportunities to introduce new content to that and give people more things to do. Um, and for CCP to not extend us that courtesy is frustrating. Obviously, it's frustrating. Um, you know, it would, and this is, again, the same reason, you know, and I don't mean to harp on it, and I'm not bitter, 
but this is a this would have been a great reason to have somebody um, from our region of space on the CSM. So if 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 for no other reason, then there would be a voice in the room to say, "Hey, come on, guys, what's going on? Like uh, the fucks? What, what what are we doing here?" But right? by the same token, uh, uh, Volk, you you live in a C two. You in fact, I think Odin's is one of the largest C two groups, to my knowledge. How does this uh, whole crab thing affect your end? Since you can actually f enter um, K space, unlike the others here. So I think what will be interesting for us, and um, you know, we'll we'll see how it plays out when when people start getting comfortable using these sites. What's been nice recently with the kind of end of the, I guess, the clustering of everyone's tunes being in Delve, um, is we've seen a lot more. I guess, kind of life in bits of NullSec that weren't populated before. Previously, you know, we, we could roll for a long period of time, rage rolling that NullSec static and find sections of space where all those people's pilots were away doing other things. And now we can roll into sections of space. We find that you know, the, the, the game is much more alive in those regions. Um, it'll be interesting to see now that those people are back home and, you know, people have been away fighting a war for a while. They want to make money again. If these crab beacons start mm. getting start getting more use, and what opportunities that that creates for us to um, to try and muscle in on it, you know. Well, on the well, just briefly on the war. Now that the war is ending, are we seeing wormhole groups and wormhole population increase, or what's happening? I think it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, you know the war. <sighs> There are a lot of groups that are no that just don't exist in wormholes anymore, um, for various reasons. You know, I I don't want to pretend like it's all meta based, um, but you know, for better or worse, you know, a lot of major groups just don't. You know, they're not playing the game anymore, or you know, either their their pilots have left and gone to either join other wormhole groups, um, or gone AFK, um, or you know, biomass their tunes. And a lot of people have had a lot of different reasons to do that. Um, the war, I think, for the most part, is considered a the or rather the war being over i think is in general considered a net positive for um everybody and anybody who says otherwise is uh out of their mind um but you know it is it is very far away um you know where where most uh i think wormholers would would see that benefit is if they you know if they like to go blopsing um you know there are, there are more null set crabs in space um, and now for, you know, for better or worse, well, for worse, there are more null set crabs in, uh, J space too. I mean, it's no secret that there are a lot of major, uh, null blocks that are setting up farms, um, in wormholes, either to collect, uh, some of the new capital mats or to farm that, that delicious blue loot. Um, and that's something that needs to be addressed too. I mean, not, I shouldn't say that it's not a problem with the game. It's just something that, you know, it, it, it is. It is a factor in 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 what we're doing. So, um, I think on the whole, and I you know, and my colleagues here can confirm or deny. Uh, content has been a little bit better recently uh, because because of things that are happening in wormholes. Um, at least there has been more stuff to do. Um, yeah, but that is that is less to do with the with the war and more to do with uh, wormhole politics. Well, I don't know, Mark, because I mean, there was a dark increase in uh blue loot redding once the war came in so so wormhole space averaged what was it like 10 uh, was it 10 trill or 10 bill i can't remember like a, oh, yeah. maybe it's 10 trill a month like it's a whole lot a month right yeah. once the war started that doubled like we we went mm -hmm. up now there was a few uh roach fleets you know whether they're botting or improper broadcasting who have recently been banned so five of the seven of those groups have been removed but you are now seeing with the war being over that that blue loot graph in the last two months of the mer is starting to drop down quite a bit so i would say that, that um whether or not this content is is going to drop or not because there's no more crabs uh in wormholes that have just been pushing the ist and nelsic i'm not sure but it's interesting seeing that graph change as the the war changed as well i mean and the other i mean it is also worth mentioning too that we're back into i mean it's autumn now i mean a lot of people are um you know and i don't want to this is not a um i'm not rejecting what you said because i kind of you know i more or less agree with it um but you know the season's changing. People are you know some people are going back to work now who have been in quarantine for you know the better part of the last year and a half or so. Um, 
you know, I can only speak anecdotally, but we have a lot of guys now who are um, having a harder time spending time in game um, now compared to the last, you know, again, year and a half, um, either because of COVID lockdowns or because mm. of, um, you know, their, their work being, you know, work from home and now having to go back into an office. Um, mm. So th that is, I think, also a factor at play, yeah. though, again, only able to speak anecdotally. Um, it's hard to say whether or not it's, it is a major factor or not. Well, certainly I can say, you know, as, as a group who, who live in a, a wormhole with that null sec static, we interact regularly with null sec is how I would say it's, it's easily our primary source of content and how we, how we generate fun and value for our, uh, our members. Um, the, the recent couple of months have definitely seen and you know we, we talk about you know the you know caps being back because they're the big prize aren't they you know everyone wants to bag caps in in null sec but um even just at the level of you know response fleets being around to you know push us off and give us a bit of a fight or um small gang uh, individuals being around and part of the standing fleet to to generate that kind of a uh, you know, kind of smaller scale engagements in their space when we're out and about um, there's definitely been an uptick of that since in, since the end of the war in the last few months, and I I completely attribute that to to players being back in their own bit of space, and I think that's true largely wherever we roll into it at the moment. Yeah, another thing I would say, I'm not sure if you guys experienced the same thing, but it kind of like the height of the war stagnation. Um, it was fantastic for our recruitment. We got a lot of burnt out nullsecers looking for a change, looking for something different from what they were going through. Um, it really helped our numbers. Certainly, and I, I think the um, uh, what's been really interesting about that kind of uptick in activity is it's it, it's kind of amplified um, our kind of gameplay style and to a certain extent because we play of um, what's well, effectively guerrilla warfare. You know, we are um, we are always going to be out escalated in these fights. We have a mass limit on our on our connection into that bit of space, and we're um, uh, we're going into. Uh, bits of space where they can reship faster and they can bring bigger ships and they can bring bigger fleets than us. We are fighting guerrilla warfare and that increased activity in that space naturally amplifies that challenge for us. You know, And I think that's a really interesting, um, uh, you know, kind of change without really seeing any mechanics change. It's just different distributions of players. Oh, well, shall we move on to the elephant in the room since we've got uh, wholesale, uh, wholesale operations here? On Sunday, Hard Knocks uh, went on to talk about a uh, skirmish and some fighting they've had with you. What is your relationship with Hard Knocks and what happened, uh, well, at least from your side of things? Okay, so I'm I'm not sure how how uh, I can't speak for hard knocks, right? I think they made themselves abundantly clear <laughs> when they're on the show. <laughs> what I would say is, so we're in wormhole space as a corp to go out and to find fights, right? That's what we want to do. We want to go out and fight. We're, we talked a little bit at the start of the show, perhaps a little bit too much at the start of the show about the opportunities there are for risk making and how your static affects that. But at the end of the day, we're around to fight. We're a PVP corp. And hard knocks are fighting us at the minute, right? Um, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for fights. For us, this is another fight. And um, <sighs> we're not really a corp that has this kind of, we don't like you, or we are <laughs> like negative towards another group, or we want to, what was the word? Systematically dismantle you. That's, <laughs> that's not really who we are. Um, for us, it's another fight, and, uh, and that's that, essentially. Yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. I see. And with the skirmishing that happened, when, well, Jimmy said it was his wormhole, uh, what was that all about? Okay. Um, so we're talking about the uh, the C6 farm hall, right? The C66? Uh, presumably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when we're talking again about statics and how important your static can be 
in, in, in the wormhole that you have. Uh, a C6 wormhole with a C6 um, static, it's for various reasons, it's it's quite important as almost like a like a staging because it makes it very easy for you to access other C6 systems defensively or aggressively. So as a as a as a kind of a strategic target, a C66 makes a lot of sense. Um, and we know that those systems are precious to hard knocks, they're important to hard knocks, and we would be guaranteed a reaction if we if we attacked it. And that reaction was yeah, that was definitely there. And it in the end it didn't work out for us. It didn't go our way. But that was the reason that we selected that that target. Um, it had nothing to do with it being Jimmy Michaels personal farm hole or, or whatever that was it, it was purely a strategic decision probably more the fact that he i mean he's involved with it directly so that's and it's an important one to have so that's why it's his we didn't hit it because it's his right ring i mean that makes sense yeah yeah we needed a c6 six and that's the one that we uh that we had available to us so that's the one we tried to take we we didn't take it that's how it goes well to them it's to them this is what uh, started the fire <laughs> up they gathered all their people and and it's uh, there's going to be some sort of reckoning and systematic eradication, but to you, it's so, what, yeah. what, that's that's what it is to them. But to you, what is it? Just another. So fight? for us, it's a, for us, it's another fight, right? For us, it's another fight. Um, systematic eradication. It's true that we've that we've lost some farm holes. That like that's that that's true. Um, but that's that's it. It's not. It's not like. Um, it's not like uh, there's been. A systematic dismantling of the corp. A few guys have lost farm holes. It's, it's hardly the end of the world. Yeah. As a line member, I think uh, the perception is definitely just like, oh, it sucks that like you know the guys have lost some of their farm holes, but it's like we're ready. I don't. know, I'm kind of waiting for like fight. I guess really like a bigger fight. I think that that's what's going to come. That sounds like that'll be pretty fun. The, the... Yeah, me too. I'm I'm really excited for there to be this uptick in content and to get some good fights. I really am, and I'm ready. The whole losing farm holes thing, do the loss of these farm holes, are they ever really permanent or is it just somebody clears it out and somebody resettles it and it starts the chain all over again? There's um there's just over a hundred C sixes in the game and they're they're certainly I guess to put it in, in case based terms, like they're like your R sixty four wormholes. Like they are mm -hmm. the best cis per hour and and there's not that many of them, right? So they're a, they're a precious resource. Um about 65% just short of 70 is uh, is owned by Laserhawks or Hard Knocks. I think it's like 36 versus 32. So they uh, they definitely own the lion's share of them. C5s are a bit different. There's like over 500 of them. So there's there's a whole lot more of them. But uh, yeah, they get they get cleared out from time to time or people hang on to them. But certainly C6 is rarely a change hands. I think one of the things that it's kind of important to mention, and maybe this is something that's it's different to nullsec wars, right? Um, if you're at war or in a, let's say, a, an ongoing conflict with an, with another wormhole group, it rarely affects your day to day. Like, like it certainly, certainly for 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 me and my playstyle, which is building chains, looking for fights, looking for content. Um, nothing changes. You you kind of you log in. You scan your connections, you try to find targets, and if you find targets, you try to kill them, right? Or, or you, I don't know, you need a case base or something, or you go on a room. The day-to-day -day life at wholesale is, at least to my mind, basically the same. Like, nothing has fundamentally changed. Yep, I would agree completely. I see. There was something that was raised up in that. What's the deal with the filaments? I mean, actually, worm holders all around are oh, yeah. absolutely despise filaments. <laughs> Yeah, I th that, okay. So, so filaments is definitely something that I would like to uh, that I would like to talk about because I felt like um, I felt like wholesale got a little bit of a rough deal um, with this perception that we somehow use. We're, um, we're literally the only ones that use them. Right? Yeah, yeah, whole, yeah. Wholesale are the only ones that filament. Um, apparently, um, I felt that was that was painting a kind of a false picture. So, in the recent um, eviction attempt of MGLA HK. Um, started a fight, yeah. saw they couldn't win it, and filament it out. And that's fine. Like that's that's it's a perfectly valid use of them. I'm not sure how I feel about them then coming on the show and saying that it's a wholesale thing to do that. Um I think I the think... issue though is there's there's no time, right? Like you providing mm -hmm. you don't have a weapons timer, um, you can use them immediately, right? Like 
they're incredibly convenient, probably too convenient in wormhole space, I would say. But they, but soon they don't fundamentally change too much, right? Because like you say, you you have to have extricated yourself from the fight, and your timer has to have run out. So in the time before filaments, you'd just be safe logging and scanning away out later. It's not. Yes. Yeah. It's so not the case that, that you'll. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. So I'll, I'll agree that um. So there is that, right? Because your alternative option is you you don't log in, right? You stay logged off, and then a day or two days or four hours later, you you form up and leave. So that's a good thing that you can get people back into the game rather than them logging out and playing New World or, or something like that. But um, you, but, you know, when you choose to go, you get to go, and, and there's not a lot. If even if the enemy fleet is formed, they can do to stop you leaving, and that's yeah, it's pretty OP. I mean, it's 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 much different. I mean, it it, it really is much different. The the, the you know the, the previous way this was done was you know you're right you would safe lock um you know if you got yourself away from a fight you could go dock up uh because your your active weapons timer uh doesn't stop you from docking um or, or you could go sit inside of a pos if you needed to um and at that point you can either safe log and then uh you know scan yourself out later um or uh you know safe log and then come back in um at a later time and you know try and continue the fight or do whatever but uh, the the issue with the filaments, and you know, I think the the concern that some people have over their um, you know less judicial use uh, is that effectively you're taking you know, and this is what's different than noise filaments. Although um, it could, I I would argue that it's a similar kind of uh, issue, uh, is that you're effectively taking yourself from a position where you're in danger and putting yourself into a position where you are almost entirely safe uh, with very few um uh Steps very between, few exceptions like, yeah. yeah you're you're going from a position of uh, you have uh assets committed to the grid right you're engaged in some kind of altercation uh you've decided that now you cannot get out of there uh in, in a way that uh or now you can't win that fight uh, either your opponent has brought in overwhelming odds or you something has changed to your disadvantage yeah um, it's just not conducive right and now in order to get out, you either have to fight your way out, uh, you have to, um, you know, safe log and hope that you get better luck a different day. Uh, or you can just press this red button and now you're out and that's it. And so you don't have, there's no, there's no ownership of it, right? There's no, um, you know, if you, and if, if the same goes for defenders as well, um, you know, if you have a bunch of assets in a hole that you want to get out load them into a bunch of, you know, alpha haulers and eat them out, put a cloak on them. And then once your timer runs out, eat back to case space and you're done and you lose nothing. Um, and I think, you know, when people talk about the issues with filaments, um, you know, I, I want to, I, I think it's important that we're honest about how, uh, you know, the difference between what you could have done before and what the option is now that you can just, again, press that red button go to Pochvin, wait 15 minutes, and then be back in case space with no, I mean, there's no other risk. Uh, even with a noise filament, you still have to wait at, you know, you, you have to get yourself out of null sec. You have to find a Thera exit, or you have to burn through null sec and hope that, you know, you don't get caught in whatever you thought was, you know, important enough to get yeeted out of a wormhole. Um, that same stipulation does not apply for, uh, for Pochvin filaments, which is why uh, they must be eradicated. They have to go. What, to the yeah, I think if you asked um I think if you asked uh, anybody that is a wormholer, hey, would you get rid of filaments? I'm pretty sure all of them would say yes, right? They're so ubiquitous now. I mean, everybody carries them. They're constantly in everybody's hold and they're just part of the strategy. It's an, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. I mean, that's just the way of the game right now. Um, hopefully, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and as far as far as Pochfin goes, uh it's a shame that a lot of this, a lot of the activity that happened there has died down in, in recent months because, you know, in a lot of ways, Pochvin could have been uh, this huge source of content uh, creation for people that are hunting down uh, those people that are filamenting out of different places, right? I mean, Pochvin could have been this place uh, that was just a great way to catch, you know, stray wormholers. You know, they're spread out all over this region that we just created, but um, but now it just doesn't seem to be the case. Well, I mean, the, the way that the, the filaments work, though, would still preclude you be able to do catch wormholers when they get into Pochvin, right? Because the way it works currently, um, you know, without any hypothetical alterations to the way the, the, the filaments work is 
you um you know you're in a safe spot somewhere in your wormhole uh you align to a safe you either have a you know a cloak you go out there and scan you a safe you have somebody burn a safe for you um you undock you're tethered uh you warp to a safe um you know you immediately start aligning you press the button and you're gone it takes zero seconds to do that um you can't be dc or you can't be uh, uh combat scanned down that time and then you're immediately in potchfin and once you get to potchfin you basically do the exact same thing you are in you're just you're in space you're not like on a celestial you're not on a station you're just in space you immediately align cloak and then you cannot be caught uh somebody hypothetically would have to have uh you know probes sitting where you are when you land there uh and the chance of that is is obviously I mean, it's, it's an impossible thing to do so um and then you wait 15 minutes you decloak you press the button you're back in case space and that's and that's it it's not like I don't disagree with the idea that, you know, it would have been a cool thing to have, um, you know, people who are trying to escape through Poshvin uh, have, you know, some element of danger to it. Um, but with the way that they have built the filament system right now, it just is not conducive to that, uh, which is to say it's not possible, right? Uh, because the, the entire, the amount of time that you are vulnerable between when you undock from some kind of staging structure in a wormhole to the moment that you are in case space um, the amount of time that you are vulnerable, which is to say you can be locked, right, or combat scanned down, uh, is less than five seconds. Um, and you just, you cannot get a combat scan on somebody that fast. You can't warp to them that quickly. Um, and if somebody gets caught in the process of doing that, chances are pretty good there was either somebody inside feeding intel or they have fucked something up in a pretty major way. <laughs> um, so that, I, it, I think it is, it is, it is, the system as a whole from top to bottom was built for something very specific, right? The system was built to allow people to ferry themselves into Pochfin, right? Um, which is great. I mean, if that's the way, I, I don't hate the idea that they created this new unique system just to get people into a new region of space. It's kind of a cool idea, right? The problem is like everything else CCP does, it's a blanket, it's, it, it's, it is a blanket change on a, a a vast universe of many different regions of space, and it doesn't apply the same way everywhere, right? Just like we bitch about uh, surgical strike, you know, people in in nullsec thinking surgical strike is a boon, and it kind of sucks for wormholes. It, you know, it yeah. If you want to get from K space to um, uh, to Pochfin, awesome, that's great. But it is antithetical to wormholes that you should be able to immediately extricate yourself or extricate yourself from yeah. a dangerous situation um, with the press of a button with no risk involved. Uh, and then moments later you are, you know, free to go. I remember, I just... I'm, go ahead, I remember, sorry. Uh, sorry. I remember uh, it was spoken about on the previous stream that somebody suggested a 15 second delay or however many second delay. Does anybody here object to that? I think it'd be fine. As a line member, I can't, I, don't, I just can't, uh, I can't think of anything that'd be awful with that, right? Like, it takes away a lot of the problems that I agree with Mark on. Um, and I think it then also keeps from happening, because what I, just having, you know, come back into the game in under a year, what I would really not like to have to see is something where it requires you to, you know, back in the Dark Ages, log off for eight hours, four days, you know, a day or two to make sure no one's around, and then be able to get scanned out. That's, like, beyond tedious. I mean having something where there's some counterplay, I think is great, right? Like having things with counterplay, I don't think is a bad thing at all. Yachts, for example. Too loudly, because what <laughs> happens then is B hears, oh, we don't like getting Sino dropped. Oh, that's fine. Bang down a Sino in him. Like, Damn it. Bang down a Cloakie in him, you know? Oh, we don't I, like getting filament out. Oh, well, bang yeah, you're down right. a filament in him. I take right. it back. No changes. Everything's perfect. I do worry uh, a little bit that what we're trading here is for safety, right? Um, where you're, you're absolutely right, and I, I, I want to, I want to say up front, I fully agree with you. Safe logging and then logging back in later just to scan yourself out yeah. is okay. tedious and keeps people from playing the game. But I don't feel like the, the, the better option to that, especially in wormholes, which you know are, are, are so much yeah. different, a, a, a different realm of space than. Uh, than K space because of of the way you can you know you can't jump clone in a wormhole you can't you know um you know you can't, you can't jump to a, a super in a wormhole you can't bridge in a wormhole right um 
I don't feel like the trade-off should be, you know, okay, well, we want to, we want to limit this, this, you know, small incon inconvenience yeah. here and then be able to, you like know, if you're combat scanning them, right. You want to be able to have a freaking chance. It makes sense. Like, absolutely. Uh, for my but money. I think, I think what Mark is saying though, right. And forgive me if I'm wrong, Mark, he's like, and, 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 and I know I'm biased here, but wormholes is, is a, a harder mode, Iron Man mode, if you'd like in some games where there are no safe logs, um, or sorry, auto saves. There's no restarting when mm. you die and stuff. Right. So I guess what Mark is saying that, you know, we, we're probably enjoying too much safety in a harder level of space. Mm. And, and maybe we should accept that maybe something gets taken away from us. So, you know, there's a bunch of mechanical things you could do, but right now it's, it's just kind of too easy to, to press that button. And like you said, just get on with the game. I've heard I mean, people voice. Sorry, uh, sorry I've heard if I may. We keep talking about this 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 issue as if it's a question of safety. If we didn't have the filaments, or if the filaments didn't work the way they do, it wouldn't be the case that your heavy armor fleet, which has found itself outnumbered, would say, "Oh well, guess I'll just go get myself whelped." You know, you're not any more safe. That fleet would safe log. The same mechanic that lets you take the filament lets you safe log. Even the timers are the same so it's not even a question of safety what we're talking about is convenience yeah so uh, to create a, a a genuine hypothetical right and and let's say you have a fleet in a, in a system and you you decide to safe lock right um now whoever is attacking whoever is on the other side of you has a choice themselves right they can either um leave and be done with it uh, and go about their merry way or they can wait you out and if they wait you out, they still have a chance to, um, you know, get some kind of recompense for their time, right? Because what you're doing when you are going to engage somebody is you're making a, a certain kind of demand on them, right? You're demanding either their uh, their time or their money or their assets or whatever, which is fine in most cases. I mean, most cases, that's what the game is about, right? We're all making demands on each other. And then you either have to meet the demand and engage in some kind of, you know, back and forth or you leave and that's you know that is the other option um so if you've gone now and you've you've engaged with somebody uh, and, and you've decided that what you know while you're in the process of engaging oh no, no no this is too much for me i want to get out i don't want to you know i don't want to partake in this transaction anymore um I, I don't feel like that is fair to the people who have now committed time and committed mm -hmm. assets and committed resources to dealing with you for lack of a better term um, I, you know, it, it, it is, you know, I don't want to be crude on the internet, but it's a blue balls, right? Like it sucks. It sucks to have to have to tell your guys like, ah, okay, well that fleet that just came in here, we thought we we're going to have a fight Well, they fill them in it out. Okay. And it sucks to say that they safe log too, but the difference is if they safe log, that doesn't mean that the, the content is gone. It just means the content is later. Right. And not very fun. I'm guessing. Well, and not very fun for whoever's going to log back in because if like and wait for it, both yeah, sides. I think I mean, it would you, suck for both, right? But you still have the chance for a fight. Is is I guess what I'm saying. Like I guess it, it's sort so of you, like imagine this. Imagine you 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 go to stab somebody, right? Imagine you've got a knife. Um, I've got this fork. There's, we're going to use this as as a visual metaphor. You've got this fork, right? <laughs> and I'm going to get a fork in the computer room. <laughs> I, it's, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a tall person, and my, I've got these, you know, my arms are... Right, okay, you know, gotcha. Right, so I got to... It's good for getting on the back. I don't eat with it uh, much. Anyway, so you've got this fork, right? And you, you're going to go up and stab somebody. You, you've decided that you're... This is the, this is the, you know, the, the transaction of wills that you're now about to engage in. You're going you're gonna to stab somebody. And that person comes around with a gun. And you say, whoa, whoa, this is no good for me. And instead of, uh, and, and so then you just disappear from space, right? With my magic powers. Well, now this guy is all kind of, uh, kind of flush. I mean, he had to bring this gun. He had to provide this gun. He's a little worn out. He had to prepare himself. My sympathy himself. for gun man is very he had, to, he had to produce this gun. Like now he's kind of like, well, okay, I'm here. I'm ready to go. I've got this gun. What am I going to do? So <laughs> the two options are either he has to now, because this guy just magically uh, went back to his house, he either has to go to this guy's house and and you know and find him and knock on his door and then produce his gun or he can wait till this guy magically reappears maybe he'll leave guy... and no one dies no, well I'm just, I'm just... oh yeah so either the, the the now knife guy has to run back to his house okay and gun guy can pursue with his gun right that's that's the difference right I one that analogy is great but i understand what you're saying <laughs> on on the one hand you have an option where you press a button and the content goes away right yeah that's, There's no counterplay, right? That part sucks. 
That does suck. Yeah. I don't feel like trading the option for there to be content, even if it's not optimal content for a system where the content just goes away is the optimal play. So, yes. I think that if, if they're going to keep filaments in, if they are going to do that, then they either need to remove them from wormholes or give them some kind of generous timer. I am kind of of the mind that 15 seconds, is right? Because you know, it, 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 people who are, you know, it is, it is possible to scan somebody down and go warp your fleet over there and start to grab people. But if people do it in mass, I mean, who, you know, you're going to grab a couple maybe and everybody else gets out. I don't yeah. feel like, I don't feel like that is, that is fair again to people who are now invested in this thing. I mean, gun guy brought his gun. Like he had to buy the gun. He had, you know, maybe he brought a friend with a gun. All right now they're both standing here with a gun. Yeah. And they're wondering like, what, what are we going to do? Right. Yeah. 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 So again, I, again, I mean, so I'm not ask a, a quick question just to come in here quickly. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sorry. I'm talking too much. No, like I just, um, it's two o'clock in the morning here and I, am I being asked to decide if I like forks or guns more? Like, I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying if you're making the investment on a gun, it, I don't think it's unfair for somebody who has the gun to then want to, uh, you know, they want to with no problems. Yeah, that a little back a and forth. American concept. <laughs> I got this gun. I should be allowed to use it. I've got I this think... gun. <laughs> you you have you have brought a knife or you brought a fork to this now to what is now a gunfight. It's okay. It's a quality. It has to be some kind of back and forth. Part of the it's... analogy, I'm down. Oh god, uh, this this is what worries me because this happens in other video games where they put in what they call quality of life and then, ah. then it starts creeping up on the things and then just starts cha fundamentally changing the entire game altogether it, oh it's a quality of life it's to no no man it, it, it changes everything and then you see and people you, you see this fleet of what's the biggest storage thing orcas just a bunch of orcas warp off one by one and then and they filament off that's that must be depressing to watch if you're a victim that is that. and that's the point i'm trying to make right and funny, you know, visual metaphors about forks and guns aside, what you've done is you've introduced a system that very specifically was made to do one thing. And that one thing is get people from somewhere in space into Pochfin um, for the purposes of, you know, being in Pochfin. Um, what they have done inadvertently, like they have with so many other things, is created a system that is supposed to do one thing but is most used by you know people in a certain region to do something completely different. They have yeah, we to, certainly don't stay in Pachman, right? Like if we ever no, some, yeah, like <laughs> there's no. I mean, sorry it's, guys, it's pretty, but it's it's sorry Pachman guys. Yeah, I don't I don't want to shoot rats all day if I can avoid it. I, I get away from that and crabbing anyway. Um, so rough, yeah. It, it's just it's you know, and and the, and I should say this too. I don't blame people necessarily for taking advantage of a of an option that's there because that's also part of the game. I mean, that's why people rolled frig holes back when it was a bug, right? That yeah. was, it was people taking advantage of a system that was in place. And I don't, I don't inherently find that to be, you know, a, a negative. I personally don't like filamenting away from content, right? In situations where I have got myself in over my head, I do feel a certain sense of responsibility towards, you know, the, the situation I put myself in. Um, and I would like to fight if I give the opportunity to, even if, you know, now there are overwhelming odds against me, even if there are, you know, it is a situation where that is generally hopeless. Um, you know, the way I see it, I mean, life is short, right? If you, if you, if you, if you play your cards, right, you get 85, maybe 90 years and then it's over. Right. I don't want to, you know, when, when grandpa Mark is sitting there on his deathbed with the whole family around him and he's, he's sitting there you know, talking to the kids. I don't want my last thought to be like, Man, I miss a lot of great fights or a lot of opportunities for some kind of fight. like, I wish I hadn't filamented. If only, if only I hadn't filamented, what if I, the lives, I've, the, the years wasted. Like, what the hell is Grandpa talking about, right? Yeah, reminds I mean, me it, of a bodybuilding quote. The quote is, you know, everybody wants to be, able to be a bodybuilder, but nobody wants to lift you know, heavy ass weights. Everybody wants yeah. to do evictions, but nobody wants to bash structures. And then I mean, it's, see it everything sucks. just filament out. It's, it sucks, right? It sucks to be in a position uh, where you are now at the end of your rope and you it's think like, work. fuck, like this is not good. It's, um, it's a careful balance between balancing tedium 
and quality of life. If you max up tedium, uh, max up tedium, nobody wants to play it. But if you max up quality of life, then there's it's like immortality yeah. without any tedium. There's no there's no rush to things. It's like I, I have had no the I've and I yeah, I know I've talked. This is not a you know, this is not an episode about me, right? And this is you know, and I sorry, and I want. <laughs> And I want to, you know, I, I, I am, I'm happy to be here and su- supporting my friends from wholesale. Um, but I do have to be, you know, clear about one thing. I, I've had the good, the good fortune of uh, working with a really, really good fleet director, um, or or a really good FC in my own group. He's our head FC, um, and he's he's an extremely talented young FC. He's had a lot of great ideas. Um, I trust him inherently. And one of the things he always says uh, about any kind of engagement, right? Uh, is that there 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 are always other plays, right? There is no it's it's very easy to look at a hopeless situation and not see anything except a hopeless situation. Um, but having the opportunity to take a step back and and recognize, you know, the position you're in, the assets you have, the people you have with you, um, you know, other groups you can call, um, other assets you can bring in if you need to. There, you know, there are more than one way to skin a cat. And there's more than one way to etch, extra kite ex, fuck me extra extricate extract there's more than one way to get out of a fight that's bad for you right that's just it it is there are other options and i feel like the, you know what the filament has done is has simplified the process because instead now of having to uh, you know work through the 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 different options that are available people just look at it and say this one option exists why would i do anything else and i think again personally speaking I feel like that's a net negative for the game. And I feel like the, it, it limits the variety of a region of space that is already suffering from a lack of variety. Thank I think you you're right. I really do. And uh, I feel that I feel that there might be a way to kind of bridge the gap, right? Between this Pochvin, um, this lack of content in Pochvin and the film, like taking these filaments out. There must be a way to give these guys something to eat while still preserving a bit of this ease of access um, to get in and out of fights, uh, to still create this risk for doing what you're doing, right? So if you if you have a full fleet and you filament everyone out and they're spread out all over Pochvin, I mean, that's dinner time. So that's what it should be. That's what I felt it should be coming back from the game. I mean, what, uh, coming back to the game, I should say, after all this time, filaments were brand new to me. So I had no, I didn't know what they were, what how they worked, anything like that. Um, but I, I think that there must be a way to kind of bridge the gap, maybe some kind of cloak timer uh, coming out of the filament, um, maybe a, a, more, a different kind of timer somewhere along the way. But I think in general, you're right. Uh, filaments uh, make things a little bit too easy. They prevent counterplay. And counterplay is one of the things that makes EVE Online great. Like one thing I care about the most is counterplay on stuff. Like you're talking about having chances and stuff, 100%. Well, Absolutely. We're, uh, we're pushing uh, into 80 minutes now, and ah. I'm ready to... I'll give my final thoughts on it because, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's. I hate the damn things, but there's a fine line <laughs> between bravery and stupidity. And when you look at the filaments, there's just with what they do, there's just no reason not to use it. And it's it's it sucks that that if we want more variety, then we gotta stop having things that just kill the choice. I should say this too, and and to wrap up you know, what has been now a lengthy discussion about this one issue. Um, you know, it is, it, it is like anything else with Eve online. Um, and with, you know, our beloved developers, if there's one thing we can be certain of, it's that a year from now, we'll have forgotten about bitching about, uh, Pochman filaments <laughs> because there'll be something else to bitch about instead. <laughs> so, well, I'm looking that is, forward- that is a, that is a way to do it. I'm looking forward just to see how god awful the next update is going to be. Uh, is there anything else that we should just briefly mention before we depart? No. Well, Turbo uh, Feeder Glory is recruiting. <laughs> yes, definitely join them. Alternatively, start your own Wormhole Corp and come on down and have some fun. Yes. Well, thank, well, thank you for the uh, even classed wormholes tonight to, uh, for uh, coming on. Uh, for the C two, we have. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Volk from Odin's Call and uh, from the C4 scum of the wormhole community. Uh, we have <laughs> Wholesale and uh, my lovely co host Mark. And from the C6, the 
well, the largest of them all, and possibly the most, most beautiful, uh, the most, the most wealthy. Yeah. God, unless somebody steals their sights, uh, uh, sin. And uh, I'm, and as for me, I'm uh, still technically in a wormhole. But that's all for, uh, we have for today. Uh, Full mark for CSM seventeen. You know you want to do it. Hopefully we'll catch. I won't uh, bitch about you on Reddit. I promise you. I we'll won't do it. Well, we'll catch up uh, another time for more talking in stations. Uh, bye bye. Thanks so much, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Thank hey, you, Rich. Rich. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Okay. We are